You had you had you had a bad day. You had a bad day. I wasn't right that day. You know what? I'm letting him get up again. Try it again. Amen. I had a bad week. I'm, I'm let I'm let try it again. So those of us who walk this way, walk this life, you get, if you make it to Shabbat, if you bless you to get here, then you know what? At sundown, it starts over. And attack. Go on the aggressive. Go on the aggressive. We've said two weeks ago that you a soldier. Don't need no politicians. We all got it. I got to toughen up. I ain't speaking nobody but myself. I got to toughen up. Accept the role. Accept the position. Accept the call. Pick your game up. Work harder. Train harder. That means study more. Pray more. Amen. Don't have no face that the book say fear not. Acts 5 and 31. What it say? It say, Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. The whole house of Israel. What he said in Acts 5 31. Now turn to Acts 11. I refuse to, to discuss this with any old crazy. Here's a light brother. And I dag and I dag I'm sure ain't gonna be accused of just teaching one thing for one people. Wouldn't get me hot, wouldn't get me hot and hostile. Get me out of get, get me out of context to try to prove something. And, and Acts 11 and 18, it says, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Yah, saying, Then hath Yah also to the Gentiles granted repented in life. Amen. So in Acts 5, very clear, all of Israel. Repentance. Acts 11. Those who are not of a covenant. Repentance. Amen. Acts 26 and 20. Because the word testify of itself. But if you got an agenda. Right. Or if you're ear itching. Uh -oh. Or you're just lost and you just, you just want to do something. But do something for him. He'll, 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 he, will, he will put you to work. I know we all done had a job in here where somebody said, hey, man, you should never be standing around. There's always something to do. <laughs> There's always something to do. Ain't that we are sure said it in? What y'all doing? Standing idle. Right. Hate idle time. Jesus. Idle time will kill you. Man. We got to hate. So when you go to the altar, altar we got to have a hate or a disdain for the things that are heavy in the life. The sins, the weights, the thoughts, the mind, the fears. You got to hate it. But flesh wants you to hang on and crave to it. It's necessary. But in reality, it's unnecessary. And he said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. He said, take and learn of me. I made that altar perfect for you to see me. That when you put your stuff in the fire, I'll make sure it's gone. But what do we do? We like dogs. We go back to the vomit. Hallelujah. We go back to digging. Man, there's got to be just one more lift in there for me. Mm. We read Acts 26 and 20. Acts 26 and 20. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Oops, sorry. When we go to the <coughs> altar in honesty, truthfulness, we get the yoke broken. Matthew 11. He said, take my yoke. We drop off the weights of sin. That was Hebrews 12. Just read the whole chapter. It's a place of sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13. Read the whole chapter. Or, uh, The, the, the uh, 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 fire, the fire at the altar, it never goes out. Leviticus 6, is, read the whole chapter. The same fire is a redeeming fire. He has ransomed us from one stronger than us. He went in and pulled us out. Jeremiah 31, read the whole chapter. 
This is why his eyes are a flaming fire. Revelation 1, read the whole chapter. <laughs> Respect and fear him. He is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, read the whole chapter. That's twice. He says, I am Yah, I am Yahweh, I am Yahweh, I am Yahuwah, I am Yahweh. He said, well, I change not. So the sons of Yaakov, you are not consumed. Malachi 3, read the whole chapter. The polluted altar, a polluted altar, our own will, or the adversary will, We've been talking about the altar and all the things that y'all said to do. But we know in this book, there's a lot of stuff about what you are not to do. And then that thing that said in Romans that whatever was written before, time was written for our learning. That through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So we know there's plenty of brothers to take y'all's altar and then put stuff that don't belong on y'all's altar. There's been kings and rulers and darkness that wants you to put something else on this altar and you to bow down. You can keep your flesh. You can keep your ways. You can keep the things you like. Just come and bow down to me. That sounds familiar, don't it? If he say it to you, sure. Why won't he say it to you? Once again, darkness plays ch chess. Most, most believers playing checkers. Uno. Playing Uno. Can't even play checkers. You're playing Uno. I just matched the, the, the color. Sick. People sick. What's your religious preference? <laughs> Baptist. Methodist. Garbage. Stick to the word. I ain't seen Baptist in I ain't seen Methodist in here. I only see that when I'm driving up and down these streets. Methodist. I ain't saving nobody. We all got to go. You're supposed to fear the one that can uh, uh, not, don't, don't fear the one that can only harm your body. You're supposed to fear the one that can harm the body and the soul. That's right. I claim and I cleave to this. Yeah, you at the wrong altar. Leviticus 26. We, we, we're at the end. Leviticus 26. Uh, this is this hot here today. I know that much. This is hot in this room today. What oh, got that heat on? Now, Leviticus 26 is very parallel to Deuteronomy 28. Right? Read the first 14 verses. It's all about if you do. <laughs> I will be. I got you back. I got you. You good. You straight. You ain't going to be hungry. You're going to be happy. All this good stuff. Once you get there in verse 15. But if you ain't. Oh, I'm going to hunt you. I'm going to come after you. I'm going to wear you out. It's one thing to, to run from man. You can't run from Allah. Where are you going to hide? He made it. He made, he made the earth. You don't think, you don't, you don't, you don't think the earth going to tell him where you at? Amen. He talked to the earth. The earth talked back. Where that boy hiding there, man? He over there. And he went over there, jumped in the boat, and went over here. You don't, you don't think he ain't going to find you? Can't hide from this man. In Revelation, they will be crying. Uh, uh, the, the, let the, don't let the, let the mallet out of stuff fall on us. But the, 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 the presidents and kings and queens, they got bunkers and they got all this stuff on these deep caves. Woo! They got, they got places dug in the caves where they can go when stuff get crazy. And them going to be the ones. Don't let the mountains fall on us. <laughs> we can't hide from him. That's what the book said. Leviticus 26 and 30. And that is true. It had nothing to do with the script message, but that, that is true. <laughs> Leviticus 26 and 30. This is what Moses said. He said, I will destroy your high places, cut down your images, cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. I hate you. I will make your cities waste, bring your sanctuaries to desolation, and I will not smell the savor of of your sweet odors. That will come from the altar of sacrifice or from wherever he placed his name and that we're supposed to take our sacrifice of praise or back in that time, burnt offerings, peace offerings, the, the grain offerings, the different offerings, and, and it's a sweet savor to his nostrils. But he said, hey man, you get to going on some crazy stuff, some off the wall stuff, I hate it and it's stinking my nose. Okay? Judges 6. Judges 6.
Judges 6 chapter. Judges chapter 6, verse 19, and it reads, And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of Yah said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cake, lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. And the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and unleavened cakes. And there arose up fire out of the rock <clears throat> and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cake. And then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of Yah, Gideon said, Alas, Yah Elohim, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom until this day, and it is yet an Orpha of the Abizirites. Now he put that stuff on a rock or a stone. An angel touched a rock, and it was just like a what? An altar. Consume that cake and that food. Now if it had been me, I'd be like, hey man, let's try to eat that. I was trying to eat that, man. I was trying to eat that, but it's all right. Whatever, whatever you want to do, brother, it's all right. I'm with you. <laughs> that was a little joke and joke anyway. But point being is that he built an altar <clears throat> afterwards. And if he used stones, uh, it would have been nothing that he put a tool to. Okay. All right. And uh, so we, we're looking at this. And then is it in this chapter? We're not going to read this because of time, but this is when, you know what he did, right? He went and he knocked down. Uh, and it came to pass the same night, 25, let's go ahead and read it because I stopped too soon. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that it is by. And build an altar unto the Lord, thy God, on top of this rock. And he in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Remember we read earlier, he said that, hey, wherever I put my name, that's where the altar need to be. Okay? Because I'm going to hear from you. All right? Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him. So it was, because he feared his father's household, and the men of the city, he could not do it by day, and he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that it was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that it was built. So there are other altars. Right? That ain't got nothing to do with the Almighty. He said, man, tear that stuff down. All kind of idols on it and, 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 and images and things. Tear it up. Break it down. And we'd have, we'd be just like Gideon. You start going to these churches, start turning up these idols, Start turning this stuff up. You got to run, don't you? Folks are going to be coming for you, ain't you? Yeah, pretty much. They want to pull off them, them, them heels and them, them, them uh, shoes and, and, and come out them trench coats and chasing you down. You know, tore up this cross. You know, tore up. You know, climb on top of my roof. You know, tore my steeple down. Uh -oh. It's funny. That's what ISIS be doing. Y'all use anybody, woman. Amen. When I, and then he said in the I'm going to put your cards on top of them idols. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just Bible. And don't worry about it. He just be talking. He be playing around. He got that old sense of humor. We had the same scenario in 1 Kings with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The exact same scenario. And I wanted to just to touch on those two because uh, Kanukah, the Hanukkah, Kanukkah starts December with the night, the night of the 12th. The night of the 12th. The night of the eleventh or night of the twelfth? Night of the twelfth. Night of the twelfth. All right. And we wanted to look at some things. And, and once again, when we pull out, I, when I pull out passages that are not in our regular canon Bible, I want to show them. We want to be able to compare them to the scriptures that we have. Uh, once again, I don't trust these people. I don't know who gave them authority to mess with the scriptures and take stuff out of this and don't do and don't do that. But but we are entering a time um, where 
where that's why the, the crux of this <clears throat> message, the altar where the flesh dies and holiness begins. Alright, because we gotta get rid of some stuff. Because to be kadosh, it just means to what? To be set apart. Just to just just to separate. Separate from the unnecessary. Rely on the necessary. What? The spirit. Circumcision of the foreskin of the what? Heart. Circumcision of the what? Spirit. Things we got. We got to get rid of the unnecessary. So we're going to read uh, 1 Maccabees. I'm going to read 1 Maccabees. And we're going to look at something that happened in history. But uh, according to Daniel, so Daniel prophesied. Right, and it happened in Daniel's time. It's going to happen again in our time. Right, we got to be cognizant of aware. First Maccabees one and forty one. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote this, wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and everyone should leave his law. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. So when a decree come out from the European Union or from uh, the White House. Right? I don't care what nobody says. I don't think none of these people are serving y'all like that. I don't care if it's this one or the other one or the ones before. I don't believe it. I don't see it. Because Yahshua in this book said that you'll know a tree by the what? Fruit. You know a tree by the fruit. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Shabbat. The king had sent letters to buy messengers into Jerusalem, to the cities of Judea, that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Forbid burnt, forbid burnt offerings. Don't go to the altar no more. Or at least not for that. Don't worry about that. Even though your Savior said, hey, come and see me if you're heavy laden. He said, hey, don't worry about burnt offerings no more. Don't worry about that altar no more. For being burnt offerings, sacrifice, drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people. We just read all in Ephesians and all in Isaiah. He's trying to build some. He's trying to build a, a, a habitation for him. And then what Paul said, "No, ye not that your body is a temple of the." Verse forty-seven: Set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and, pro and pro profanation. I've heard that before. To the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. What you gonna do when them kings start doing that? The half of you, half of you, you don't, you don't need no king to tell you. You're gonna do it anyway. You're already doing it. Now, verse, that was 41 through 49, verse 59. Now the five and twentieth day of the month, the twenty-fifth day of the month, kiss left. Dashing through the snow. Dun, 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 dun. On the day of the month they did sacrifice upon the idol altar. Which was upon the altar of God. Oh. Mm -hmm. So they took some of y'all, put something else on top of. It. Now you go to the altar. Bow down and pray now. We got you. You're safe. You're free to do what you want to do. Child, please. First Maccabees, second chapter, verse 15. In the mean, while the king officers such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city, Modin, to make them sacrifice. So now the king officers them came. The military that showed up. With their guns and rifles and suits and boots and tanks and bags of money. Some of you just take you just take you just take the money. Especially churches. Like if I want if I want to if I want to corral the people, I'm just going to church first. Who got more who got more uh, uh, hold on the people than a pastor? <laughs> they, 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 they play chess. Don't worry about it. They're just gonna repeat the same thing. The king officers came and compelled the people to revolt and came to the city of Modin. When many of Israel came to them, Matthias also and his sons came together. Then answered the king officers and said to Matthias and his wives, Thou art a ruler. You're a teacher, ain't you? You're a preacher, ain't you? You got a congregation, you got a strong big old family, don't you? Thou art a ruler and an honorable man and great men in this city. 
and strength with sons and brethren. Right. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, come thou first and fulfill the king's commandment. Put them on spot, put them on front street. Like as all the heathen have done. See, back there was already to be a heathen. Mm -hmm. You had colleges for heathenism. Mm -hmm. I think it was called Hellenism. Mm -hmm. You can keep your hell. Like as all the heathen have done, yea, and the men of Judah also. See, everybody doing it, everybody doing it, everybody doing it, everybody doing it. Mm. Time out. Has anybody seen the new Master Pass commercial? The Master Pass, I think it's a commercial for uh, MasterCard. Joe Montana, old quarterback. Mm -hmm. And the girls say, Master Pass, Master Pass. And Joe Montana's there. So the people are such sheep, they're not thinking about this theme of the commercial. Oh, it's Joe Montana, greatest quarterback. Of the, no, Tom Brady's better than him. So he, she keeps saying Master Pass. You use the what? I use the Master Pass. Here's my Master Pass. Man. So he grabs a, a million dollar vase and he throws it like a football. It breaks. He's like, oh man, how am I going to pay for this? She says, hmm, Master Pass. And what Master Pass is, is a way to pay uh, on a chip. But Visa, they they kind of they kind of stepped the game up, you know. With Visa versus Mastercard, oh. so this is a whole nother commercial, right? And they they talking about yeah, we're gonna take the chip and expand it to regions beyond before. I wonder if it's a region like Sweden, because to ride a train in Sweden, all you do is walk up to the terminal, mm. stick your hand out. It's so convenient. We have all these hackers, but they can't hack this. They're doing it right now in the water. Oh, no, just, every, just you just get the chip with all your, your business and your money and your, it's already there. Medical records. Yeah. Medical records. Come thou first and fill the king's commandment. Mm. Like all the heathen have done. Mm. All the devils do it. Just jump on in. The men of Judah, the, 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 the all these churches and, and, and people and everybody doing it. Well, I've always done it. Mm. So shalt thou in thy house be a number of the king friends. You see that man with that gun? He ain't gonna shoot you. He gonna make sure you get a good way, get a good escort home. Mm. Now I'm like, children, what about your baby? How, how your baby gonna eat? Mm. Your children? That should be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. But we'll take care of them, man. You when you, when you do it this way, this is the, the good. We're gonna give like for first college year, wherever they wanna go, four year junior college for free. Don't worry about it. We have grants and all kinds of stuff. Don't worry about it. Verse 19. Then Matthias answered, spake with a loud voice, Thou, all the nations that are under the king's dominion, obey him, and fall away every one from the religion of their fathers, and give consent to his commandment. Yet I, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. God forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. See, a bunch of people, it's easy because the law done away with. Uh oh. The law done away with. So what was written, what was written uh, aforetime yeah. was written for our learning. Amen. And that through the comfort and the patience of the scriptures, we might have hope. So we see you coming. Amen. Now it's up to the people to be ready. Amen. Have your faith built up. Verse 22, we will not hearken to the king's words. You're telling me to go stick where the sun don't shine. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion either on the right hand or the left. Did I turn? Yes. Which thing, when, Messiah, when, when Matthias saw, he was inflamed with zeal. Inflamed with zeal. And his reins trembled. You so worked up, you feel it in your belly. You feel it in your belly, you're so worked up. Neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. Wherefore he ran and slew him upon, an altar, upon the altar. Also the king's commissioner who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time. And the altar he pulled out, oh, like Gideon did. But the most high told him to do that too, did And you know what the most high did with Gideon? We know the little story, you know, how him and the third man, he wore their behinds out. Thus dealt he zealously for the law of God like Phineas. Oh, like in Numbers in our Torah? Oh, okay. Did it to Zambri, the son of Salom. Mm -hmm. Matthias cried throughout the city, 
with a loud voice. It's, I think it's in Proverbs about crying down in the city. Who going to hear? But Thias cried throughout the city with a loud voice saying, Whosoever is zealous for the law and maintain the covenant, let him follow me. Mm. You don't believe what Yeshua HaMashiach said? Follow me. Mm. You don't believe what we, what we what all, all about this stuff, about the altar. You got to you, come, come to me. Mm -hmm. He's the only man that can be the altar and the high priest at the same time. <laughs> and then um, we, we need to touch on the sacrifices. Mm. He needs the sacrifices too. He needs the sacrifice. He needs the altar. Any the high priest at the same time, the same place at the same time on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread. Who else can do that? Mm -hmm. And so he and his sons fled to the mountain. You don't believe what Yeshua HaMashiach said? When this stuff happened, go where? Mm -hmm. To the mountains. And they left all they ever had in the city. Mm -hmm. don't, go back. don't go back in your house. If you're on the roof, jump off that roof and sprint. I just want to give Yah Elohim the praise and glory for this word, for this message. Amen. I want to uh, uh, thank him for uh, uh, just divine revelation and, and inspiration uh, at this time, uh, knowing that we have to, uh, that, that, that the flesh is where the altar dies, mm -hmm. and that regardless of whatever the world do, uh, we, we got to get rid of the unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Everybody in here and everybody out there and everybody, anybody that's watching, you got to get rid of the, of the unnecessary and that's where our holiness begins because we don't got separated, and we want, we got to be set apart so that we can that we can, that we can continue our journey and growth in Him so we can walk in the Spirit. But it's not by flesh, right? It's not by might, but it's by His Spirit. Thus said Yah Elohim. Amen. So we want to thank Him for the Word, for the inspiration, thank Him for His mercy, because things happen and He'd be good to us and He ain't got to. Mm -hmm. And we put ourselves in worse situation than. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't, we, it ain't about the adversary. Look in the mirror. Amen. It ain't about the adversary. Just look in the mirror. We put ourselves in our own predicaments and problems because the flesh leader, that's what it's saying, James, don't it? The desire, that lust, when it, when it is conceived, when it's birthed, I mean, it brings forth sin. And we, and we go and we chase that. We no different than crack addicts. Mm. We chase in the high. We chase in the field. Something feels good. And you, you, you have a, 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 a memory on something that you, that you thought it, 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 it appeases me. And then you, then you hit that pipe. You sniff that line. And you know what you realize? It really wasn't all what, I, what, I was, what my flesh was building it up to be. Now I feel bad. Now I feel ashamed. Now I feel guilty. And this man will let you get up. Let us get up again and give another crack at it. How good is he? Amen. Yeah, high priest, he the altar, he the fire. Forgot to read that. He is a consuming fire. But what, 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 what we know about the altar, that the fire is never to go out. He says, I'm here for your morning time, I'm here for your night time, midday, I'm here. I, I will I, I will never not be available for you. Thank you. We the ones that don't want to make ourselves available for him. Only when it's dire. Things is dying. Right. Somebody died. <coughs> I'm going to cry. Now I want to come see him. Man, too good for us. That's it. Deny him all the time. Question him. Mm -hmm. So at the altars where flesh dies and holiness begins. All praise to Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Amen.